Hello, Bophiles! Do you know how to test a read to make sure that it's functional? Or even to check if the read is right for you? If you don't, or even if you're just curious on how to improve your read making or read testing game, this video is for you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video so the YouTube algorithm gods favor this oboe channel. And let's get into it! Okay, so a lot of times I'll notice my own students uh, struggle to figure out if a read is working for them. You know, I might have a couple reads out for them to try if they need a new one, and they won't know what to play or do to make sure that the read's going to work for them. Make sure the read's not too hard or whatever, uh, that it's responsive enough, whatever it is. And I wanted to have this codified system of trying out a read for them, but I thought maybe it'd be useful for you. If you're making a read and you find a read that sounds good, but you're not sure it's functional enough to take in public, you need these tests to figure it out. So the first test is to just crow the read. Now when you crow the read, you want to take the read all the way to the thread with your mouth, just blow. It should respond right away. That's the first test. If it doesn't respond right away, you're not going to be reliable in the orchestra or in the band or in the ensemble you're playing in or even solo. And you're going to be struggling with like that confidence of being able to come in right on the downbeat or right with the baton or right with your clarinet player's breath or right with the violin player's mm, bow. Just you want it to respond. So make sure the crow responds right away and that should translate into the oboe. No problem with the response. Now, the, the next thing the crow can tell you is the pitch of the reed. Is it crying a C? I'm going to get my tuner out, and you should get your tuner out when you're buying a reed, too, and see what's going on. Oh, okay, good. So it's not a battery. But you want your reed to crow a C. If the reed's not crying a C, you might have problems. Most of the notes on the oboe are found between the C and C-sharp peep of the reed. And you want to be able to do that on the reed as well. So, that's actually the next test. You want to be able to peep the C and the C-sharp. If you can peep the C and C-sharp, you can basically play in tune on the oboe. Test number three. So we've had crowing. We've had peeping the C and C sharp. Test number three is to basically just make sure it works on your oboe. Now it's important that your oboe actually does work, and if it doesn't work, that's another story. And I have a video, or I have an article on oboefiles.com on how to do some basic maintenance on your oboe to make sure the low notes work and that the oboe is well adjusted. So check out that link in the description below, and check out oboefiles.com for lots of other helpful oboe things. But testing it on the oboe. So there are three basic tests I like to do. The first one is can I articulate on the low register? Now again, this isn't the best sounding read in the world, but it does function, which is the number one prerequisite for playing a read in public. You might try it on the slow solo on Don Juan. to be responsive in the register so that you can never miss that solo. Or Mendelssohn III, the Scotch Symphony. You want to be able to have that low register response be so reliable that these passages are no problem responding in the low notes. Great. Next thing we want to test is can I crescendo without spreading and without Changing the pitch. Now, C is the most offensive note on most oboes, so I try it on a C, make sure I can still sound good on the worst note. Now, I'm not trying to make the oboe sound bad, but I do want to play the crescendo and really kind of open up the embouchure to make sure the reed's not going to just ha on me and get all spread and ha yay. 
So make sure <laughs> that the reed sounds good even on the worst notes of the oboe. A uh, good test for this might be a passage from the Mozart concerto to make sure you have all that color palette. And if you have that control over the color palette, you know you're going to be able to play that read. So, the last test has to do with intonation, and I like to do octaves. Make sure the reed can play octaves without me having to do so much gymnastics with my mouth. And if the reed can do that, then you know you've got a functional reed. You're going to be able to play that reed in public on most things. Now, is this the best sounding reed? No way! I don't know if I would take this on a performance as my first choice, but I would definitely practice on it. And if I had to play it in public, I think I would be okay. Some things to remember, some things to remember throughout the retesting process is you want to make sure that your posture is good, that you're relaxing everywhere that doesn't need to be engaged. So just have your muscles hanging off your skeleton, just meat off of bones. Also, you want to make sure you're taking a good breath as you play. Taking breath to expand your torso, especially the lower torso and the rib cage. And blowing out by pressurizing the lower torso as well as evacuating the lungs with tension. Uh, I shouldn't use the word tension. Uh, maybe like uh, with, I don't know, viscosity. Yeah, that's a good word. Viscosity between the notes. So the notes kind of like gel together and you're not just like honking away on the oboe. Make sure everything's very intentional as you're trying the reeds. I hope you find this video helpful when you're trying reeds and figuring out what reeds you like. Um, if you do, leave them in a comment below with what are your favorite reed tests. If you have any other ones, I'd love to learn about them. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the videos that the YouTube algorithm gods favor the Oval Files channel and we can continue to make, you know, a wide-reaching oboe audience happy with these oboe videos. That's it for me. As always, when in doubt, play beautifully.